What do you call two groups of musicians who exclusively play at funerals? Hey internet, I'm Steve and welcome to Ratho. The Lost Metal comes out today! By the time this video releases, I will already be chilling with a bunch of other Brando Sando Fandos at Dragonsteel Con. If you're there, I'm on three different panels and you should totally come and say hi. But it's been over six years since we heard from Wax and Wayne, and you forgot what happened in the last book. Even if you didn't, let me get you up to speed. Obviously, massive spoilers for Bands of Mourning. Waxilium, sorry, Asinthu is 15 in the Terrace Village, sneaking out for a night on the town. Wax stays behind to eavesdrop on his grandmother, talking with a constable about a recent case of arson. The constable leaves a bullet as a reminder of the last time there was death in the village, which Wax swipes after his lecture. He follows Forch, another coin shot, into an old dormitory and finds a five-year-old kid tied up and cut. <sighs> My oldest is almost five, so this is a lot more visceral for me. Forch grabs Wax and tosses him out of the window, but he manages to catch himself by pushing on the bullet in his pocket. He runs back into the building and gets into a pushing war with the psychopath. We then see the influence of perception on even a magic system as straightforward as allomancy. Wax realizes a bullet is made up of three separate metal pieces. The bullet, the cartridge, and the primer and his steel line splits. He lets go of the rest and pushes on the primer, firing the bullet into Forch's skull. The report alerts the rest of the village, who arrives as Wax unties the kid. 28 years later, making Wax 43 for those counting, he and Wayne finish a raid with the constables, Steris's idea, and head to his wedding. Wax shuts down a chondra trying to talk with him, and the ceremony begins, then comes to an abrupt end as the water tower above the church relieves itself upon the inhabitants. It's fine. Steris already has a backup church booked two months later. Wayne admits to Marisi that he had a hand in the sabotage, and then Vendel recruits Marisi. He sets up a slideshow in Wax's study and discourses on identity and its implications on ferrochemy, specifically the creation of unkeyed metal mines like the Bands of Mourning. Another chondra, Relur, took some pictures of the supposed bands, rumored to be made by an apparently still living Lord Ruler, but he came back with a spike missing, so he's kinda crazy. Their mission, if they choose to accept it, is to retrieve Relur's spike and, since he had a picture of Telson in apparent captivity, rescue some other people too, probably. Also, Vendel has Breeze's hands and wants Wayne's bones. Speaking of Wayne, he finally lets go of Renette, who's had a girlfriend for 15 years, and doesn't even look back. Guess who's on the market now, ladies? Or sentient shape-shifting piles of goo? On the train to New Saran, heading south, Marisi reads a bit in Spook's Hemallergy book and gives Wax a new earring, interrupting the romantic accounting session he's having with Steris. Then the train gets attacked. Good fights happen, Steris reloading for Marisi, people getting thrown off the train, shootouts on top of the train cars, the whole nine. The important bits are, a man with a cane drops a cube-shaped allomantic grenade, Renette's fancy grappling hook things are awesome, and trains are massive enough to have a cadmium bubble move along with them. Also, Wayne and Milan are hooking up. They get to New Saran, a city built on top of a series of flat-topped stone terraces with waterfalls flowing everywhere. Sounds lovely. Rather than wait for a gondola, Wax and Marisi steel jump their way to the top of the city. And here's another of my favorite sequences in the Cosmere, the gang checking out the hotel room. What with Steris' worst-case scenario list, Wax's property destruction, and Melon's bags full of bones and swappable breasts, Aunt Jin's comment to Marisi is sheer perfection. Young lady? You need to get away from these people. Wax and Steris head to a party, and Wax gives a bill to a blind, cologne-wearing beggar who lobs a strange coin at his head for change. Hoyt apparently has a fairly solid claim on actually owning the place. After stumbling through social interactions at the party, Wax ends up dancing with Chris, who interrogates him about his abilities. He asks Kelasina and Trone, the mansion's owner, about the weird coin he just got and she bolts out of there. Wax has to follow her, but needs a distraction, so Steris projectile vomits. Best girl. Meanwhile, Wayne and Marisi go grave robbing and get almost blown up. No spike to be found, so Wayne dresses up as death and scares a stuffed albino animal-loving crooked graveyard keeper into revealing what happened with the missing spike. What a sentence. Wax hears Kelasina talking to his uncle via a fancy new telephone, and then gets framed for her murder. melan has got a set of aluminum bones, which can apparently counteract a pewter fairing's ability. Plus, she's got a sword arm. Cool. If you have a sword for an arm, 
it sort of becomes just one giant middle finger, doesn't it? Wax snags a bracelet that turns out to be an unkeyed gold mine. Free healthcare for Wayne! Wax and Steris fly back to the hotel and kiss all cute-like, and they all make a hasty getaway. On the way to the set excavation site, Wax and Marisy experiment with the cube. Wax lobs Wayne in like a spoiled tomato, and everyone else follows like unspoiled tomatoes. Wax and Wayne go and look for suit, and Milan and Marisy look for the spike. The ladies see the guy with the cane, Professor Irich, go into the ship, so they follow him, drop the cube, and keep following him to see where he puts it. They recover both the spike and the cube, as well as rescuing Alec, one of the imprisoned Southern Scadrians. Wax reunites with his sister, who shoots her guard because she totally hates the set, and absolutely not because she's secretly their leader and couldn't blow her cover. So instead, she blew Wax's cover, and technically she blew that guy's cover. Firefight begins, they make good use of the elemental grenade, Marisy gets shot, Alik distributes iron medallions which allow everyone to store their weight, and they all take off in the escape pod. Milan does some wacky Chandra battlefield surgery to heal Marisy's gunshot wound, and they head to the Sovereign's Temple, trying to beat suit to the bands. Lots of interesting information about the Southern Scadrians is shared. The Sovereign's history, how medallions work, and the three main factions in their society. Hunters, presumably Ayatil's cultural ancestry, want to destroy the bands. Alik's people are the Malwish, and the Fallen are the former rulers who pissed off the Jagenmeyer and caused the Ice Death. Telson accidentally makes Suit aware of their presence, but they make it to the temple and see a big ol' statue of the Sovereign with a spike in one eye, holding a spear. Wayne snags the spearhead because it looks like aluminum. Milan triggers a bunch of excellently on-theme traps to get to the final chamber, and Suit's men eventually catch up. With Suit's help, they open the final door, only to see an empty daze. Surprise! Telson's not a good guy! She and Suit both have some spikes, granting elementic abilities. Wax gets shot twice and escapes down into a pit, into another room with a daze. Suit follows, triggering a trap that could get them both killed. Wax gets crushed, but Suit pushes out of the way. He tries on the bracers, but they're just a decoy. A diversion. Wayne chases them away and begs Wax to hold on. Telson takes Milan's spikes, turning her back into a mist wraith. She is my least favorite sequence in the Cosmere. Everyone else gets marched back to the front of the temple. Marisy realizes Wayne traded Relur's spike for the spearhead, which Wax realizes is the real Bands of Mourning. Too bad he dies before he can say anything. Marisy grabs the spearhead and taps everything. She basically ascends without actually ascending, but she realizes that isn't what she wants. Harmony and Wax have a chat in the Cognitive Realm. There's a strange red mist encroaching on the planet, which Harmony is keeping at bay. Wax chooses to go back, and is able to push the boulder off himself thanks to Marisy giving him the bands. Go get him, Waxy. Steris and Alec warm and arm the Mulwish captives. They start to fight against the set's men. Suit escapes, saying he's going to inform the series about what happened. Why all the math terms, Brandon? Are cryptics involved here? Wax gives chase, cause he can fly. They have a duel in the ship. Wax subdues suit. Wayne shoots Telson and recovers Melon and Ruler's spikes. Telson's got a gold mine, so she's fine, and disappears. Wax brings everybody back, and Steris negotiates an agreement. The Malwish keep the ship, the Chandra will take the bands, and everybody gets to go into business together. They fly back to Elendel, Alec gives Marisy his mask, and Wax and Steris get married. With the assassination of Kelesina Shores, a main political antagonist of Elendel, Aridel is preparing for war with the Outer Cities. Imprisoned Suit meets a fake immortal with red eyes, who says they're just going to nuke Scadriel, and blows him up. The explosion wakes up Wax. He realizes the strange coin he got is an unsealed copper mind. He taps it and sees through the eyes of the Sovereign. Well, the eye and spike of the Sovereign. He finds a group of people freezing to death in mildly cold weather. His arm, crisscrossed with scars, reaches out, and he says one word, survive. <laughs> And now you're caught up! As always, thank you to the incredible artists that allow me to share their work. You can see more of their stuff in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon, where you can get access to all of my previous scripts, research notes, and even see early edits of my videos. You also get fancy recognition on my Discord, which is full of wonderful people like Doug! He's a good alloy. Once again, Lost Metal is releasing today! And if you're at DragonsteelCon today, you should absolutely come to my 
panel at 9 o'clock, where we will be theorizing about exactly what is going down in this, the final book of the Wax and Wayne series, before we get the comic books based on them from Era 3. I will be joined by Melinda, known on TikTok as That Cosmere Chick, and Trevor, the narrator for the Lost Legends of Scadriel Mistborn Adventure Game podcast. Right after our panel is over, book distribution starts, so we can all go read and find out. Alec dis Alec distribu Alec 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 distribu uh. another word <laughs>